So, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you very much to our scientific presentations in biology. And today we would like to deal with our third ecology. So, before starting with ecology itself, let us have a look on scientific presentations in general. And I think you remember that last time we were how to discuss the questions on our excursion. So, sitting in the audience of a presentation or lecture, so it's over and you are asked to ask something. So, last time we were just dealing a little bit uh, with the question you don't like what you heard. So, uh, this time we would like to go a bit further. Just have a look on that. You are not satisfied. What do I say in such a situation? I understand what you are saying, but I am doubtful about or I am skeptical about. So, you are already saying that you don't like what you heard. I understand what you are saying, but I am doubtful or skeptical about. Let's have a look on the next versions. So here you as well thinking, no, I am not satisfied. Um, you can say for instance, I can't help feeling that. Or it's just open to question whether. So, this is the chance for you to attack uh, already the person who is saying something. So, I can't help feeling that, or it is open to question whether. So, keep in mind, this gives you the chance to say that you don't like what the person in front is saying. So, let's skip this and deal with ecology. Of course we need a lot, a lot of vocabulary uh, when you, we are specialists in ecology and we would like to talk about ecological um, just matters. So let's have a look on our suggestions for vocabulary. Herbivore, we probably know this already, herbivore or Pflanzenfresser in Deutsch, Herbivore. We don't uh, know the next um, word. Invasive means invasive or angreifend. Proximity, die Nähe oder Nachbarschaft. Wavy, Gewalt, kann zum Beispiel uh, einen Namen spezifizieren. Zum Beispiel, the feather, distal feather, with a wonderful, wonderful stage, the distal. Our position means Eierplage, for instance of an insect on a plant. Prairie, die Prairie, Laum, der Lehm. These are two possibilities where a plant can live. Prairie and loam. Musk scissor. Nick and the diesel. Carlos Nutrients in Latin. And we have on this slide palatable. Genießbar. So a plant could be palatable. So, let's continue with our next vocabulary. And you see once more the English version and the German version. Trap means Falle. Cropland, die Nutzpflanze. And you remember that crop might be a Nutzpflanze, might be as well Getreide. Because um, es gibt sehr viel Getreide was als Nutzpflanze angepflanzt wird. Cropland. T 
to suffer um, means, for instance, erleiden or ertragen in German. Susceptibility, the Anfälligkeit or Empfindlichkeit. To evaluate, beurteilen, and bewerten. And very important in ecology, read. Das und kaut. Abundance means abundance or häufigkeit. Spatial, räumlich. Explicit, eindeutig. To repeat, uh, can just say different things. Here in ecological context, deplete is aufbauen. To force, singen. Patch can just have different meanings as well, but in ecology, patch means Stelle oder Stück, explicit, das Stück. To call, ah, co-occur, gemeinsam oder zusammen auftreten. You can use this in ecology as well, to co-occur. Our next vocabulary, is, you see, is over here, and it is very, very important as well. Gravitational means gravitation, heat, hitze, heavy metal, the schwer metal can just be taken up by plants. Heavy metal, schwer metal. Humidity, die Feuchtigkeit. Hydration shall die Wasserhülle. And we have injury, die Verletzung. Flood both next words that are very important as well. Irradiance means Strahlung, very important. Lichen, die Flechte, you probably know this from plant biology. Light, das Licht. Limnic means limnage. Uh, Limnisch, uh, think on water. So this is water without salt. Limnic, Limnisch. Marine, marine, means uh, for instance water with a lot of salt then. And we have mineral nutrients, die Mineralstoffe. It is illustrated by a special plant. You may know this. I suppose probably not. Caterostigma uh, planticaneum. It's used in laboratories worldwide and labs all over the world. But you can find this in southern Africa and it's a very, very interesting plant. So you have a uh, so called red plant visible here. It looks normal for you. But it's living in deserts. If it is hydrated, it starts to live and flower and gets beautiful, beautiful purple flowers. You see it's over here. So if there is a dry season in a desert over there, the plant might dried. So it might be dried. You can see it's over here. And it looks quite dead, but it's not. That's so it's very interesting. If the plant is hydrated again, it starts to live and flower. So, no dead plant. It's a Caterosigma platicanium in a dried version. If you hydrate this, it starts to live and flower. Uh, visible here. So it's a plant typical for deserts and it can just have uh, both phenomena. It could be dried and totally hydrated. And let's analyze this to understand um, what about the genes in the dried version and the living version and they would like to yeah to search for that. So Beautiful, beautiful illustration. 
So, but let's skip at that point and start with our own ecological um, exercise. So, I will just read something and we have in mind that we are asked to give an English presentation on what we've heard. We should um, deal with the Russian text but um, of course have your own words so we are allowed to use 15 keywords once more and with the help of these 15 keywords we are asked to um, give ourselves our presentation in English at that time. So here is the text and you remember that I will explain the text. It contains uh, blue words that are unknown and black words. I suppose you know that. So let us start reading Shared Herbivores and Natural Ecosystems. In natural habitats a majority of interspecific biotic interactions between different species can be observed. In addition to direct interactions between two species, indirect effects of predators and prey occur in the general communities. So our next uh, sentence comes here. The complex network of relationships may be analyzed and demonstrated with a three species approach that uses two different house plants species and one shared herbivore. So that's very interesting. Two house plants and one shared herbivore. So we should keep this in mind. It has been accepted for a long time that the growth of plants in monoculture might cause increased herbivore attacks because alternative house plants are missing. So, of course, a lot of blue words, and they are explained in that slide. So, herbivore, we probably know this already, herbivore of Pflanzenfresser. Natural means natürlich, ecosystem, ecosystem. Natural ecosystem means, by the way, in a trees ecosystem. That's why I thought it might be unknown. So here the pronunciation is important. Habitat means habitat in German. Biotic is biotisch. Interaction, Interaktion oder Wechselwirkung. Species, die Art. Prater, der Räuber. Prey, die Beute, is the next word, and it's very important as well. Prey, die Beute. To occur, ach Quatsch, to occur, ohne Q. To occur, heißt auftreten. Community, die Gemeinschaft. Relationship. Approach the other. Here we are coming to ecological words once more. Host the world. Plant the pflanze. House plant the wurzeln, wurzelnze, and attack angreifen. Let's jump back once more. We were asked in addition um, to explain this in English. So this time I was just skipping uh, the selection of keywords. Um, we only have a look on uh, what is written over here. And we try to explain this in English. So of course this is a suggestion to you. And you may think, no, I don't like this. I make this in an absolutely different way. I would just talk a little bit of that. 
I read a very interesting on chat herbivores and ecosystems. From this article, I learned that there are biotic interactions between different species in such natural ecosystems. And I read on predators and prey. In this article, I just read that two different house plant species may be attacked by one shared herbivore. And um, I learned in addition that these house plants may be just attacked both with the same herbivore. So, and I read this article um, on plants and monocultures that this might be a problem and that herbivores may take our plants that are not specialized on taking but they find them in a large number of monocultures and they decide then they can take us. So this would be one version to explain and I think we would like to continue with our read because it's very very interesting. So let us start here. Neighboring monocultures with other houseplant species may reduce the damage of the plants by highly specialized herbivores. There is, however, also increasing evidence that plants might also have negative indirect effects on other houseplants when attacking herbivores that are not monophagous. Thus, plants may experience increased damage in the vicinity of another species that serves as a host plant for a herbivore. Examples for this type of interaction are salt mesh plants, atriplex and silicornia. So, of course, it's very interesting. And before just dealing with the blue words, I would uh, like to explain, because it's shown several times here beneath, um, what are the salt mud plants, atriplex and silicornia. You can see this over here. A is the silicornia. In German, Quella, you see this over here. And that's living, um, I think, close to, to the seawater. And you can find here the atriplex of dot on a melder. Salzmelder, so, uh, um, I think it's atriplex marina or something like that. And salt grass over here. It's including um, via, I think, plants, the salt. You can see it over there. So, this. It's by the way, Atriplex, this is Zirconia, and we have, of course, to deal with our unknown words. These are not so many words, but they're very important. Read on the damage, Schaden oder Schenigo, Evidence, Hinweis, Monophagus means monophag. Vicinity, in that context, it's Nachbarschaft oder Nähe. Salt marsh, very important. Salz marsh. And we have uh, to be dealing with the genus Gattung. I think we know this already. Species and genus Art and Gattung. So, I'd like to interrupt here a little, little bit because uh, it's close to my research. And I love this. So, in our research, we were just thinking that Epidopsis is over here. So, we are interested in certain used genes in our research. And we said Epidopsis might be uh, interesting for use in lab, but it's not, not usable for um, searching for sort and used genes because it's dying. You can increase 
This is a little bit, but I really hope this will not stand this. And so, in our research, we decided we a plant that's very close to Arbidopsis, but it's all tolerant. And we found it on the Canary Islands. It's the Lobularia Mortima. And you see it over here. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. It's smelling like honey. It's um, a marvelous plant. Lobularia Maritima. And you see it over here. It's a control plant in the lab. It's flowering and you can uh, salt stress by 500 millimoles of sodium chloride. This is an enormous amount of sodium chloride. And the plant it starts to die at first, but then it um, just seems to be a control plant. You see this over here a little bit that uh, the plant continues with the flowering and the leaves are already close to the control plant and after um, half a day this might be you see um, the control plant here once more so this is a plant that's marvelous with being resistant to salt and it is excluding salt from the root. Uh, you can. This is uh, actually our research. This is over here. You can now compare all the genes, and it's every of this over here. The lobularia over there, and you see that the lobularia it's um, using a lot of genes that are not used in every of this at 125 millimoles of some chloride. So ex extremely interesting. But we jump back to our um, shared herbivores because it is interesting as well. Understanding and writing in scientific article. That's our next exercise. We should read the text, we should uh, select keywords. We uh, should stay with such an article and uh, read this before putting it away. And finally, we are asked to um, just show in written way that we learned something from this article. So, let, let me read this. The Jones Artiplex contains the plants and to still me salt around salt, salt marsh species. The, these so-called salt bushes retain salt in the leaves and can thus survive high concentrations of salt in the soil. The small succulent herb Siliconia is another species that is common in salt marshes and often neighbors at breaks. In salt marshes, Eronia nephala maritima is a leaf beetle herbivore of Siliconia orbia that also uses an atrexic species as a less common house plant. So, that's extremely interesting, but let's read at first the words that might be unknown or you don't use this as often. Genus means Gattung, Desert, Die Wüste, Salt Tolerant is Salztolerant, Salt Bush, you can resolve there, Salzbosch. To retain, Salt Kalten, and Leaf and Leaves, Blatter and Blätter, this is over here, and I think we heard this already a few times. To survive means überleben, soil der Boden, succulent, succulent, it's for instance siliconia, you see it here or so, herb, das Kraut, common, verbreitet, 
endlich wieder der Blattkiefer. Let's jump back. Um, remember that we were asked to give this in written way. That um, there is a close vicinity of Archiplex to Siliconia. And there is a leaf beetle, a Rhinophala maritima. That's actually attacking Siliconia. But if Edgeplex is standing next to Siliconia, it's just thinking that it might be eating on Edgeplex as well. So you should um, explain this in a written way, and I think I take this and take home message because I cannot do this here, and you can do this there at the moment. If you would like to. Please uh, read this with my PDF files and explain this in a written way. So I continue because this is interesting as well. So this is another uh, topic we are dealing with in the lab. And extremely, it is extremely interesting. Actually if we were starting with rice, you see this in this picture. Rice is a cool plant, it's very important, it's very interesting, and it's very salt sensitive. You see about the varieties we are working with in this picture. I-29 is not resistant to salt as well as oil, so it's actually dying. We are dealing with a section variety, Pocali, you can see this over here. It's resistant to 150 millimoles of zinc chloride. It's actually not so much, um, but a little bit. So the I-29 is dying with that. The Pocali is not. And in roots, it's excluding actually the serum chloride. We were thinking as well, yes, we would need a plant that's close to rice on the genetic level. And we found this with the Festuka, Rotschwingel in German. It's growing close to the cows. You can see this over here. On the genetic level, it shares about 90% identity with the rice, but it's very salt tolerant. You can see this in six, this picture. You see the control. You see 125 of the chloride. You see 500 millimoles of the chloride. And it's something um, the sugar can live with. It takes up the sermon of the chloride and it excluding um, crystals of sodium chloride. Um, in the leaves and leaf root connection over here. So it's very interesting. And we are comparing on the genetic level once more um, the rice genes and the super genes. You can see this here. And if we learned a lot on festuca and rice. Uh, we know meanwhile that a lot of gen genes are shared with Vastuka at rice, but re they are responding and um, the Vastuka plants, they are not responding in rice. So, very interesting as well. And I think I'm asked to stop at this point. I do that. Um, I say goodbye to you, tschüss, and we're looking forward to our next lecture on microbiology next time. Tschüss.